Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to create a um, remote access. I'm going to configure remote access server on my Windows server. So I'm going to go to Start Administrative Tools, and let's see here. We want looking for remote access server. Well, I don't have it set up, so I need to probably add that role to my server since it's not set up. So let's do that. So I'll click on Server Manager. And let me make it smaller so that you can see it. Um, OK, that looks good. And Roles. And I'm going to need to add that role. So I'll say Add Roles. And next, and let's see here, remote desktop services, network policy and access services. I think this is the one I want, network policy and access services. If I click on this one, network policy and access services, you see provides network policy server NPS, which I'm going to need for my policies for clients to connect to my remote access server and routing and remote access. Okay, that looks good. So I'll click on that, hit next, hit next, and role service. Select the role services to install for network policy and access services. So I'm going to want routing and remote access services, um, host credential authentication protocol, allows you to with Cisco network access control that sounds cool so I'm just gonna turn it on even though uh, no 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 it wants all that stuff so forget it yeah no that's no good health registration validates certificate requests that contain health claims for the client and issued figure based on health status of the client I don't know about all that network policy server I'm gonna want that so I'm gonna select these four and click next and install. Okay, I'm looking at the installation results of my remote access server and I can see that the installation succeeded. I've got the network policy server and the routing and remote access services started. So I'm going to close that. And now that that's up and running, I can go to Start Administrative Tools, Routing and Remote Access. All right, and when I get here, I'm going to expand this window a little bit. And okay, when I select my server status under remote routing and remote access, you can see that it's got a red down arrow, meaning that the server is down. Right? Well, it hasn't been configured. So as soon as I click on it, it says configure routing and remote access server. Okay, so just right click on it, configure and enable routing and remote access. And I'm going to click next. And it says, what do you want here? Um, a NAT server, a VPN access, and NAT. Uh, I'm going to click up remote access, dial up, or VPN. Allow remote clients to connect to this server through either dial up connections or secure VPN internet connection. Okay, that sounds good. So there's the top choice and click next. And uh, VPN server. And I could also say dial up server. But a VPN server is really what I'm interested to for. So I'm just going to go for the VPN. Click next. Okay, and it says here that less than two network interfaces were detected on this machine. For standard VPN server configuration, at least two network interfaces need to be installed. Please use the custom configuration path instead. So I'll click back and change to custom configuration. Click next and VPN access. And that's what I want. So I'll hit next and finish. And all right.
that says I need to check the policies with my NPS um, console, my ne uh, network policy server, to make sure that, that it works with that. Uh, there's com potential for conflicts there, which would uh, cause clients not to connect. So I need to something I'm going to need to do. Look at and start the service, and we'll see how that goes. All right. And hit finish. Okay, and it's now up. You can see here that the server status, right, has a up green arrow, and I've got all of the configuration um, areas that I'll need to set up so that a client can VPN into this server. Looking at the RAS server, I can now, now that it's up, I can right click and look at some of the properties on the server. When I do that I can see that I've got IP version 4, that it's not just local area network routing, we've got LAN and demand on dial routing, so we're going to be able to do this uh, through dial-up also. And um, let's see here, we'll go to security tab, it tells us here at the top, warning sign, we've got to work with the NPS server uh, to configure authentication um, and accounting providers uh, Okay, so we're going to have to set some policies in the NPS policy server. So we'll be doing that. Um, authentication methods. They we're running uh, EEP, okay, and Microsoft um, CHAP, uh, uh, Handshake uh, Challenge Handshake Protocol, version two, and that looks good. I'll just accept that as the default, okay, and. If I wanted to, it looks like here, I can set up a uh, pre-shared key for L2 TP connections. Um, uh, if I did that, I would just click here, a custom IP security policy for L2 TP, and I could put in a pre-shared key right here for that. Uh, secure socket layer certificate binding for SSTP. We might be using that later if we set up an SSTP connection. Okay, we've got IP version 4 settings here. Uh, it's used to it's set up to work with DHCP, but for myself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a static address pool so I know specifically if someone's VPNed in, I can check the IP address and then I'll know. So I'll set it to 192.168.1.151 and end address. Let's see here, 192.168.1.152, or 155. Okay, number of addresses, 5. And the reason I'm doing that is I have DHCP already set up going from 100 to 150. So if somebody picks up an address now from uh, 151 to 155, then I know um, and I'll know who it is. So if I pick up someone from, let's see here, once again, 151 to 155, and then a, so that's a separate address range than normal DHCP services that I'm running. So I'll click OK on that, and I'll click OK to that. So when I'm looking at security again, and we talked about the L2TP connection right here, and then there's SSTP, if we go over to let's see here um, ports and I right click these are all the ports that um, remote users could connect on and we'll right click on ports and go to properties here you can see that we've got the um, different protocols that can be used for uh, setting up secure connection so there's uh, PPTP which is Microsoft proprietary which is what we'll be using to connect uh, over VPN. But if we wanted to use an open standard, we could use L2TP. You saw that there was a place that we could put a setting in there for a pre-shared key, right? And then here's SSTP, which we might do later. And you can see here that the number of client connections, so 120 pe 128 clients could connect to the server.